Let's do All right. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is Chris Ingerson, and it is... I don't know how I was going to say February, but it's June 11th, and this is the June 11th TextQuest dev stream. So, uh, today we are going to be working on... Um, well, we're going to be going over uh, feedback and notes from PopCon 2019. Uh, I was at PopCon this weekend, or this past weekend. Uh, things went generally pretty well. Um, there were one or two bugs that um, I ran into. There's, In particular, there's one bug that I ran into that I was unable to replicate, but I am pretty sure that I fixed. Um, I am not entirely sure what was the issue, that, um, but I did address the code in a way that uh, added safety checks to ensure that it shouldn't be possible, and I haven't run into it since then, so I'm kind of hopeful that I have actually fixed it, uh, but it is admittedly a little hard to tell uh, for sure if that's the case. Um, in any case, in general, uh, things went very well. Um, player feedback was very positive. Uh, there were a couple of diehard fans that came back. Um, I had a couple of people uh, compete to try and keep the high score throughout the day, which was pretty nice. Um, and, you know, in, in general, it was a good time. Um, I got about 10 pages of notes, I think. Uh, probably closer to 12, actually, now that I think about it. Um, so, you know, it was a pretty, pretty good... Pretty good convention for notes. Uh, most of my notes are fairly small. However, there are some concerns that I have after working on uh, how PopCon, or not how PopCon, how timelines work. Uh, so after working on, sorry, let me rephrase that. Um, after working on timelines for a while, my understanding was that timelines are deterministic, um, which means that they will always function, you know, no matter what happens, you can expect them to do what you what you set them up to do. That is not true. At the very least, it is not true in 2017. Maybe they fixed it since then. However, it is entirely possible that a timeline can start, and if there is a... I'm assuming that this has to do with frame rate. I don't know that for a fact, but that is my assumption. Um... If there is enough of a lag spike that a frame takes too long to process, it is possible that timelines will skip their initial uh, on-graph start call. And if that happens, things can get really weird. Now, it seems like custom clips, like clips that uh, I have coded myself, are not affected by this. It seems to be something that is only that only affects Unity's built-in um, scripts. Specifically, in this case, it was their activation scripts. But uh, for some reason, uh, if there was enough of a lag spike for one frame, uh, certain objects would not be disabled, which caused a cascade reaction, basically, where timelines would freak out. Um, and it it mostly was. A visual problem that went away after the cutscene that was affected ended. Um, fortunately, I, I have structured my cutscenes in such a way that they are basically a cutscene is actually a string of micro cutscenes. Um, so even if one thing doesn't quite go as we as we expect, uh, it's not going to be broken for too long. Um, but still, that was a significant source of stress and headache over the weekend, um, and therefore I have kind of learned that moving forward if I'm if you're going to structure timelines um, specifically with regards to act using unity's built-in activate and deact and deactivate tracks um, do not make those clips one frame long make them three frames or so I tried making it two and that was not enough um, it seems like two is possible to also get wrapped up in there which means that which is why I do think that it is a frame uh, rate issue because one frame Extending it to two frames seemed to limit it a little bit, but it didn't eliminate it. Um, and, and extending it to three seemed to get rid of the issue entirely. So that probably means that it's possible that three frames actually might not be enough as well. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it's it's a weird thing. Um, I'm not really happy that that's how it works, um, that it's not deterministic. And 
that frame rate can mess with it. But uh, then again, it's it's a games, so I shouldn't be that surprised by it, uh, especially because it's Unity code. Um, but in any case, so uh, the plan for today is essentially to just kind of go through my notes um, and take care of some of the big issues that I noticed, uh, as well as add on some nice uh, little touches. Um, one of the things, for example, that I have done, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, um, is the new game menu, and we're actually probably going to touch the new game menu today because I would like to adjust it a little bit, um, is now has some nice little touches uh, added to it, specifically uh, when you get to the end of the of a new game dialogue. Oh, dang it, I knew I forgot something got to change my sound source. Blech. Okay. Um, so, you know, if we go through all this, uh, say our name, normal mode, right-handed, um, and then we can pick a favorite color, and when we get to this bottom portion, uh, your name will now be highlighted in red. Uh, someone did point out that for that everything here was spelled incorrectly. Uh, it was, it just said, uh, I think it was like Heavy thing uh, instead of everything, and that has been like that for years, and I never noticed it until someone pointed it out at PopCon. So I am quite embarrassed. Um, so that was that was a very amusing head slap moment where I just I was quite embarrassed. Um, in any case, so uh, I would like to restructure this a little bit just because um, there's some minor things to do just to make things feel a little bit better. Uh, for example, I would probably say, I'm trying to figure out, it, well, no, hand, I was debating if I wanted to simplify handedness to like right-handed or left-handed, but um, I'm gonna leave it as that because it's possible players will be ambidextrous, but that's something else entirely. Um, one of the things that I would like to do is smooth out this, um, everything set, player name, are you ready to start? Um, I want to get rid of this yes or no and just have our final uh, yes and no be here. That's as simple as a string change, so we don't really have to do much there. Um, I was debating whether or not I wanted to retroactively color the player's name, but I think it's fine just doing it down here. Um, so minor changes uh, that I always jot down whenever I'm uh, watching people play the game. Uh, for example, one of the things that someone tried, and it makes total sense and it should work, is uh, someone tried should have just started a new game. Um, someone tried to read a note by typing open note. And currently the game assumes that open was just, you know, opening as in you like opening the door. However, it does make sense for you to read a note by opening it. Uh, that, is a, that is a common phrase for reading a note. You open the note. Um, granted, it's implied that you open the note to read it, but saying open note really should also read it. Um, so to show what that looks like, let's go ahead and continue. I'm not really sure if I have my notes equipped. I think to my game. Let me go back upstairs real quick. Um, let's see. There were a couple of minor issues when it came when it came to some players getting stuck, uh, but that's kind of the standard affair for conventions. There's always one or two um, players that will have difficulty at specific points in the game, and I can't really do much to address that, uh, just because, well, that's how that's how adventure games work. Um, so, for example, a player's tried to type open here, and it says you can't do that, and that doesn't make sense. It should basically just redirect or read. Um, so that's a simple JSON fix. Not a lot that we have to do there. Um, actually, we can probably go ahead and do that real quick. Let me, let me open up my my folder. Go to stuff here. We go to design. We go to interactions. Uh, we're gonna go to intro, castle, items. And all we should have to do here is basically just go down to verbs, and we're going to say open should be a redirect, and that 
should redirect to read. Pretty simple. Um, let's see here. Da -da 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 -da. Title screen should nope, that's something else. Uh, force open should be a word, so we're gonna add that to our dictionary actually. So I think force right now, let's see here, force, force, force. It's a verb that just means hit. However, force open should probably work. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to insert one here. And this is just going to be compound word force open, which is a verb. Um, it is the verb type open. And this is going to be open. Uh, hidden one is going to be false. Okay, so that should deal with that issue. Someone tried to force open a door, uh, and it logically made sense that it should work, but it functionally did not. So that's something that we can fix with that simple addition there. Um, oh, wait. Actually, I did that wrong. Uh, those should be like that, and these should be like that. Uh, all right, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, there were some odd one-off uh, issues that I ran into that I'm not actually sure what caused them. Um, so I have a note, for example, that uh, interacting with the sewer door uh, in the sewer level, there's there's a single door down there, uh, showed its lock in the interaction description, which makes no sense because, I mean, like, I know that it happened. I saw it. I looked at it with my two, own two eyes. I remember it very vividly. Um, but I'm not actually sure what caused it. And everything I tried to replicate the issue, uh, because I didn't notice, I didn't see what happened leading up to that. I just saw the output or I saw the interaction, um, but I didn't actually see, I didn't know what the player had pressed to uh, actually get that interaction to happen. Um, but because of that, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, which makes me think that there's some weird way of opening up um, interactions that causes problems. Uh, so that's something that's not exactly great. Um, let's see. There was a game-breaking bug that I fixed. Um, oh, yes, uh, something I wanted to add. Let's go down here, go back to interactions, interrupt sewer, and props, I believe. Yes, I think we want type val one. Uh, so we're going to go to, oh boy, this is super old, uh, which probably means um, well, we can get rid of some things at least while we're here. And actually, while I'm in here, let's just kind of go real quick, see where valve is referenced. So it is just pipe valve 1. All right, cool. So we can get rid of uh, climbables, doors, because it's not a thing. Switch, we can keep. Switch directions. That's the thing I was mostly looking for was to find the other of these things. It doesn't matter for instance that I did just remind it. Um, I'm going to jump over to the sewer scene real quick. So let's see here. Huh. I'm going to say move input the text. Nope. 
Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, let's look up dial switch then. Um, so one of the things that I need to do from a usability standpoint is um, when you rotate, I guess I can just show you actually. That will also work. Work with me. Come on. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here real quick. Should it ever choose to let me do so? Okay. I don't know what happened there. Oh, it was probably F mod. F mod was probably like, I'm gonna re-import all of myself right now. It's like, thanks, F mod. I love it when you do. That. I love it, I need not. Uh, okay, so we're going to drag this back over here. Alright, uh, so we're going to be doing, I guess technically, I should also start coding and art today. Maybe design, that might make more sense. Um, let's see here. So we have refresh rotation output, rotation message, which is, okay, there we go. So currently, when you rotate one of these dials, um, currently, if you rotate this, it says you rotate the dial clockwise. Magic starts to flow to the right. Um, we should probably say 90 degrees clockwise, and likewise, if we say rotate left, it should say rotate the valve counterclockwise uh, by 90 degrees, or rotate the valve. Clockwise, whatever. Um, with the understanding for that being that um, players are just super confused right now. Um, also, I'm 90% sure that we're going to work on the custom inspector for this because I don't see a rotation message there. So cool. Let's open this up. Which is fun because that means we're gonna double dip into some UI refactoring or inspector refactoring, um, because I'm moving all of my UI to instead of using these uh, more blocky drop downs, which are cool, uh, but they are a bit archaic now. I'm moving to a more streamlined uh, approach, uh, so everything kind of looks a little bit better. You can kind of see that here in the level info or the level manager, where it's all these like bounded boxes that very clearly group everything let us more easily see uh, what everything is associated with. So that's kind of my approach for UI design now um, in terms of custom editor stuff. Um, and you can see that there's some stuff that hasn't been ported over yet because I've only recently started doing this and I haven't taken the full time to actually do so. But um, in any case, we're going to go ahead and we might actually do it for the consumer manager while we're in there. You know, might as well just get a couple of things going. Um, let's get Issues. Any reason why inventory? That's not as legal. Content store pause view. There were a lot of things that I had touched during the fixing or the, during the hot fixes for PopCon. All right, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go to dial switch. Right click, find all references. Cool. So there is no. Dial switch uh, custom inspector. I bet there is one for switch though. Yep. Custom editor for switch. I can't spell. Try to comment my code a little bit more nowadays. Uh, okay. So buh, 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 we're going to do a couple of minor code adjustments to bring it up to new coding standards. So is an old code in the future. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say... All right, uh, we're going to go down to here, draw switch info, which we're going to go ahead and do a bunch of stuff to clean this up. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab this. We're going to put this down here. We're going to get rid of that. Well, we'll keep it there for a second. Um, so this is going to be, instead of text area, it's going to be help box. Uh, we're going to get rid of this, we're going to get rid of this, we're going to get rid of the spaces. We don't need those anymore. Um, let's see, switch ID, the ID, the examiner. Okay, cool. So we can go ahead and 
as that. So we're just going to go ahead and say um, this dot is expanded is equal to editor GUI layout dot fold out. And we're just going to go ahead and say uh, that dot is expanded with new GUI content. It's just going to be a label. And then we're going to say, oh, I almost forgot the most important part, which is we need that last true so that you can just click anywhere on the label to have it toggle. Otherwise, you got to click directly on the arrow. And that drives me insane. Um, so we're going to call this switch. And we're going to go down here, and we're just going to say uh, if this dot is expanded, and we get to do all of that. And on top of that, we're going to do this fun bit where we're going to say editor GUI dot index level plus plus. We're going to copy that. Come down here and say editor GUI level minus or minus. And then we're going to go ahead and do that again down here. And the reason for that is purely an aesthetic one. Um, if you do not have your foldout indented when you draw it um, inside of this vertical help box, I'll go ahead and actually let it compile so you can see. So it should change. Oh, it'll be under the valve. So it should change this. Um, since it's indented properly, the lettering will be correct. So you'll see the arrow inside of the area. Give it a second here. Oh, did I leave the... I did, so it's going to have a header and that. Eh. Let me give that a second. So we're going to have both of those things here. Yeah, so this is the old one, um, and this is the new one. Uh, if we didn't have this indentation when we um, drew this foldout, this arrow would be out here, and it would look ugly. So um, I typically try to indent my foldouts uh, whenever I'm drawing them with this bounding box approach, uh, it just makes it look a little bit better. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and oh man, there's so much that we can do here to improve this. Um, oh man, we might we might be going on a bit of an editor editor read uh, uh, refactor today. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I am actually going to make this a protected and a virtual function. So we're going to do, oh, that sucks. I can't get it all wrapped in this header. Oh, that's rough. Boo, 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 boo. That makes it so much worse to deal with. Um, Boom. All right. And let's go ahead and grab that. All right. Um, so we are also going to, real quick, do a change this GUI. So I want this to be directions. We're going to go ahead and say um, in directions dot is expanded is equal to editor. Oops, sorry, not editor GUI. Custom editor dot draw fold out. Uh, we're gonna say new GUI content directions. You know, actually, I bet I could do this. Um, and directions dot get label. Okay, followed by directions dot is expanded. Followed by uh, we don't really need color or position there, so we can just make our buttons, uh, which is pretty much going to be this exact same button. So we're just going to put that there. Pretty straightforward. And then now I can change this if statement to if in directions dot is expanded. I think this actually already indents, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Yes, it does. Hooray! Uh, it does not, however, my uh, bounding boxes though, so I need to say editor GUI layout dot begin vertical editor styles dot help box. And then at the very end there we can say uh, I think it's gonna be here. 
here. Add.end vertical. Alright, um, and then I can say, I'm assuming we're going to want to indent you a little bit. We might let it go and see what it looks like, because it looks like it's doing some weird indenting already, but I'm not exactly enthusiastic about that, so. Um, Okay, so we'll let that go. We'll give it a second. Um, draw direction. It's all that fun stuff. Uh, so this should be for the switch statement itself. I'll switch info. Okay, so I'm like spectrum really. It's all correct. Um, all right, let's go ahead. I'll let that compile and see how it turns out. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put it here. It's going to be a pretty low key day, by the way. Uh, today, I'm still, I'm still a little sleep deprived. I haven't quite caught up with my <laughs> lack of sleep from PopCon, um, so I'm kind of uh, out of sorts. I feel um, custom editor for C castles. Okay, um, this I think might actually have some fields or some uh, serialized properties that we don't have set up properly yet, but we'll see in a second. Um, so draw hint info right there, which uh, for now I'm going to see what this looks like. Ooh, directions are already indented. Um, let's go back here. So I don't need. Hmm? Oh, that's directions. That's right. So that's too much. Maybe. Hmm. Let's see. I'm kind of like trying to figure out how this all groups together. So this is this is actually a, a reason that I'm my design sensibilities have changed. Um, this stuff was functional, however, it was quite it can be quite difficult to understand what's going on here. Like things happen to be separated by these massive black bars, which is fine, but there's no it's it's all white space. It's not really self-contained. It just kind of flows together. Without these giant bars here, it would be impossible to tell what was going on. Um, so I need... I'm going to break that up a little bit, make these more self-contained, um, to make it more immediately understood where one starts and where it ends. Um, so the problem is the directions are definitely indented when they don't need to be. Um, which is unexpected. Feels like I have one indent too many. Hmm. Certainly interesting. Well, I suppose I can do this. Um, kind of the reverse of what I normally do, I suppose. So I'll let that compile real quick. Um, I'm curious to see what that ends up looking like. Um, and then we are going to want to go down here to draw a direction. Um, so we want to change this from one giant vertical area to basically individually drawing these. So we're going to say editor gui layout dot begin vertical editor styles dot uh, help box. And at the very bottom here, we're just going to say editor gui layout dot So that should change all of these from one big area with white space around these edges 
um, into individually grouped um, smaller help boxes. I could probably um, hmm. I'd probably do a little bit better to make these less atrocious. It seems like I'm just like hmm. well, that looks better. Um, but it seems like I just have extra indentation here when I don't need it, um, which is a bit odd. Oh, man. That is so painful. I really want to get rid of that. I would probably make these also be drop-downs. Um, honestly, it's not too bad for them to be like this because there's not really that many, but... Um, ugh. All right, um, so we're going to go ahead and... You can see that uh, one of the benefits, though, uh, from moving to this bounding box approach is now it's a lot more obvious what is what. It would be even more obvious if I could actually toggle them open and close. Um, but by having it be bounded by these small lines, it groups everything together in a more cohesive way. That makes it much more um, easily understood that these are associated with each other, but not necessarily with this stuff. Um, okay, so I am going to change up what active IDs are, and then we should be good. Um, so let's go ahead and... Goodness, I really want to just get rid of this, but we'll leave it alone. Uh, so we're going to go up to here. I'm straight up just going to get rid of this. Well, actually, no. So I just want to, like, get rid of that, essentially. Ugh. about that. We go plus, and then we subtract, and we go back down, which is not great. So there, there should always be a, an, a plus and a minus. So I guess we do have two pluses and a minus. But then we have a plus without a matching one, um, which I guess means I want to get rid of that. Uh, let's see what that looks like. And for a second, I'm going to come back down here to the sewers real quick. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and let's see here. Remove these. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so this is going to be remove this over to here. Remove this over to here. We make this be a help box. Change this to uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, permanent one. Dot face expanded is equal to editor p layout dot foldout, and then uh, dot face expanded new GUI content uh, hints followed by true. Say if this pretty straightforward there. Pretty much we're just gonna do that for like everything. Um, so we're gonna come down to here, do that. New vertical, get rid of this, get rid of this. We're gonna go ahead and grab that, grab that, say sewer. This, paste that in there, drag that, boom, 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 boom. Grab this and say get rid of that. Ugh, we're so close. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Uh, <laughs> and then we are going to make this one ID, paste that, paste that, uh, so valves, valves, and get that, dot face exp 
expanded. Okay, we can get rid of you. We can get rid of you. Make sure we get rid of you as well. Right. Copy that. Let's go over here. Come over here. Okay, cool. So that should redo that. Now we can come back over here to look at this. Oh, dang it, I didn't do it for the active ID because of course I didn't. Um, that indentation I think is fine actually, so I'm not too upset about that. So I just had some weird indentation going on. I was too far over to the right. Um, so let's go ahead and deal with those active IDs. Yeah, da, 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 da. go to draw direction and kind of look at some fun stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we are going to say active IDs equal to this. So let's just go ahead and grab this and paste this here. And we're just going to say this is expanded is equal to custom editor utility dot draw. And we're going to say, um, tree content. Well, nope. I right, just do that. Uh, click get label, followed by uh, that dot is expanded and ended with this. And then all we gotta do is just say if and active IDs dot is expanded. And we can do all that fun stuff. That pretty much should do all that. I really don't Ugh man, this is painful. I have such terrible code to do in the background. Blah, all this editor code is so elegant. Um, Alright, let's let that load and see what it looks like. Okay, and while we're doing that, we can come back over here. Ah, and this is what I was talking about. Um, so I totally forgot to indent my um, my fold out here, and you can see that it's like awkwardly shoved to the left. Um, I think this is because Unity has on all of its fields. If you notice, um, there's this like gap here from the left. I think that gap exists so that the arrows can exist. Um, so everything just has that gap to the left. <coughs> Excuse me. So in order to accommodate that uh, and not make your UI look like crap, you basically have to indent this. Um, so we got we to gotta go do that. Oh, and while we're doing that, actually, because there were so many things, uh, we have some warnings here. So we'll go back to our, well, I guess actually that's fine. Um, so we're going to go to, we got to indent all those things. Um, so we're going to say, editor D uh, dot indent level plus plus. Just need to copy and paste that a few times. Plus or minus, we got to do that pretty much in front of all of that. And we do it uh, after the begin vertical calls because if we did it beforehand, the vertical help or the vertical area would be affected. Although probably it wouldn't because uh, editor GUI layout tries to auto format a bunch of stuff, and that can actually cause some problems um, sometimes whenever you're doing custom scripting. It can be quite vexing. Oh, right. Uh, that's, yeah, that makes sense. Let's find all references here. Uh, we're going to go back to the custom editor. Uh, we got to change draw direction. Um, so we need this to be something that says da, 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 editor GUI layout dot begin 
vertical editor styles dot help box. Okay. At the very bottom here, we're just gonna do another hand vertical. So let's go ahead and compile that. Alright, so we should be able to select this, and now you can see that everything's all nice and neat and lined up, and it all looks good. Well, except for these things, because of course. I should probably indent those. Um, and it compiled right as I was clicking on stuff. My favorite time for that to happen. All right. So I'm not actually too worried about these. Um, if I was making some sort of tool for um, other people to use, I would be more obsessive about this. But I'm fine with some amount of roughness like this in my, in my code. Um, or in my inspectors, if since I'm the only one using it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't want to have nice looking UI, especially because this UI is much more uh, efficient. It shows a lot more information with a lot less effort on my part. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and um, let's just real quick hop back over to here, see what this looks like. Um, active IDs, active IDs, active IDs, and active IDs. All right, cool. Um, so things are looking pretty good here. We can easily collapse these without having to worry. Um, so uh, the other thing that I do need to do though is I needed to um, have the custom dial switch uh, editor. So let's see. Da, 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 da. I'm going to assume that was called like switch inspector. Yeah. Um, which I should call I should rename as editor. Which I know is going to cause problems. Ah, man. Give me a second here. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to let that go for now. It's going to be incorrectly named, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to create my other script first. So I'm going to make a dial switch editor. I believe that is what it is. Yep, dial switch editor. I'm going to give that a second to compile taking forever for some reason. Probably because this editor folder is pretty sizable. I'm pretty sure that I am using um, scriptable, or not scriptable objects, um, assembly, def ah, assembly definition files, but you know, it's still pretty big. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead and say create C sharp script. I'm going to call this uh, dial switch editor. Oh, of course it had a lowercase e. Ah, why you do this to me, Unity? Let's see if you actually keep that or if you serialize it or something stupid. Spell or capitalization mistakes like that are the bane of my existence, uh, mostly because Unity in the past has serialized uh, assets in such a way that if you want to capitalize it without changing the spelling, um, it will force it back to what it was serialized at because it doesn't know the difference between capitalized and lowercase letters, which is very, very, very annoying to me. Um, hopefully that will not be the case here, but we'll see. Uh, this is going to be a text quest thing. We're going to say using Unity Editor. We're going to say using sleepyl.common editor. Uh, this is going to be a custom editor type of dial switch. And then we're going to go ahead and make this derive from switch inspector, which we will now rename to be switch editor. Because editor, I feel, is a better name. All right. Um, and all we need to do there is one, make this protected. Two, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, we have to override on enable override on inspector GUI. Um, we'll say 
to uh, actually, actually, you know what? We don't have to really do that because dial switch. All it really adds is this rotation message. Um, so instead, I can simply override sw draw switch info, uh, which we can call base draw switch info, and then. Oh dear, can we do that actually? Because this is kind of a constant request. Um, let's go ahead and peek this stuff in here real quick. Rotation message, we're going to go ahead and grab that. And we're going to say serialize object.find property that. And then we're just going to go ahead and say uh, this one, let's make private. Private serialized property m, whatever that is, is equal to null. Here we're going to say this equal to that, and then we're going to go ahead and say editor oops editor layout dot property field that, which I believe is a text area. Eh. Let's make it a text area. Make that three and five. I'm sure that that's enough, honestly. Um, so I don't actually need this common editor call, and we can let that go. Let this all go, and there it is. You can see that it's serialized back to a lowercase e, which means that if we come back here, I bet you it's a lowercase e. I bet you anything, it's a lowercase e once it reimports all those scripts. Yep. Mm. Okay, so what really sucks about that is that um, in order to fix it, I have to change its spelling by adding a random character, doesn't matter where, um, or deleting a character, doesn't matter where, and then I have to let it compile, and then I have to do it again. So it's it's not so bad for prefabs and assets, but it sucks for text, or for scripts. The recompilation process sucks. Oh, you do? No, you don't. You lie so very hard. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to let that compile. Yeah, see the inconsistent case. Of course it did. Maybe, it, maybe it's because I should have renamed the meta file as well. I bet that would actually have fixed it. But this will work too. Um, we'll give it a second here. Ever compiles again. So I should probably actually close this real quick because it's going to want to recompile a bunch of stuff. Okay. You can do it. Unity, I believe. Okay. Okay, so now I can make that editor with a capital E. I should be able to select or to select this. Wow, that's all kinds of wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Yeah, that's really bad. All right, so I need to indent it. <laughs> I completely forgot about the indentation. Uh, I think I only need to indent it once, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go ahead and repeat this definition. So we have one. Yeah, just the one. Also, oh dear, I have, I randomly have a minus there at the bottom, so I don't need that at all then. Well, here, let's go to this real quick. Yeah, I have an extra indent level thing going on down there, which I don't need. Um, cool. So I'm actually not sure if I do need that then. Maybe it was maybe that was the problem was that it was um, shoving it back down essentially. So it might be okay. Maybe. See. 
I might also move my rotation message to be at the very top here. Uh, but that's a minor change. It's a superficial one. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we can collapse these. Yeah. So I'm going to move rotation message up to the top, but then after that we should be fine. Um, okay, so we're going to say you, we rotate the object name. I believe I want to actually change that to lower name. lower name um, and then I want this to be so do we want it to say you rotate the valve 90 degrees clockwise or you rotate the valve clockwise 90 degrees um, we'll say 90 degrees clockwise oh man I have no idea how to do actual degrees um, I never remember the shortcut for that second here. I'm also not entirely sure that my font actually has a degree um, icon. So we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to just out of curiosity, where are you? You're the right one. Yeah, you're the red one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play real quick and see if that looks correct. Okay. <laughs> All right. Through here. Oh, I put it at the end, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is indicative of my, um, well, you know what, no, if it was a standard non-recognized character, it would probably be a standard square, not su not a superscript like that, um, so I need to move that over here, obviously, but aside from that, I think that's actually correct, um, an easy way for me to know that is to go to... While that's loading, I'm going to check to see how to do this. So to type the degree symbol, if you're curious, you need to hold down the Alt key and on the numeric number pad, or on the num, it's on the num pad, uh, type 0176 or Alt 248. Wait, I have to do four buttons? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, we're going to check our glyph info here. Uh, this will tell us if we have the degree symbol, although it's not going to tell us in order, unfortunately. So I just have to look for a degree looking symbol. Let's see, 9, let's see, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, Tiltas, all in lowercase. That would be helpful. That's the double back. Uppercase A, copyright symbol. Umlauts, yens. Man, it would be very nice if they told me what these were. I'm pretty sure that wasn't it, though. Registration symbol. Okay. So it does have a degree symbol. <clears throat> and that's what that square is. So, fair enough. Go ahead. And actually, I'm going to try to type that real quick. So it's like Alt. That's so weird. Alt zero one seven six. Yeah, that's not at all how you do that. Or Alt two four eight. Nope. Cool. <laughs> huh. It would be nice to know how to type that though. Oh, it's you have to hold the right the alt on the right side of the keyboard. Really? Hold on. 
Okay, it's not doing it. Um, which must mean that Unity doesn't like that. Let's go ahead and just move this over for now. Um, which actually probably means... Jeez, where is that loaded in from? Even. Um, let's find out, shall we? Oh, cool, nothing is. Um, so that's not loaded in from parsing. Er, well, that's gross. Um, out of curiosity, which of course that means I'm going to have to go all the way back up to here. I'm going to look at our interactive object template, and I'm going to navigate all the way back down. I don't think that I actually added a switch for that. Yeah, we have switch combinable, switch lever, switch direct and switch. We don't actually have a dial switch, which, eh, it's fine. They're only used in this spot. Um, Alright, so let's go ahead and grab all of these. Can't say. Oh, and I also forgot to move over anything. So let's just copy both of these things. So that compile, um, our switch information now looks, oh, oh, right, oh, oh, right, 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 right. So I need to say, um, if m switch id dot is expanded, I believe that's what I used for that. So that should hide this rotation message when switch is hidden. Otherwise, it was just going to stay there forever. Um, so now our switch information is contained in this lovely new uh, editor GUI. Um, our sewer manager now has a much more pleasing uh, editor GUI layout as well. Um, all of that is honestly very minor. It's very surface level, but it's, it's something that uh, makes me a little bit happier. I like having these uh, nicer GUIs to look at. Um, let's see, sewer value should respond to level, or to lever, okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and come down to here real quick, and we're going to go to info. Uh, lever should probably also be in here, so lever. Okay, I'm going to need to do that for all of our stuff. Okay. I had a few people try to type out uh, pull lever. Um, I also think I'm going to make it so that uh, let's go back here real quick. Uh, do something like this. So the directions are meant to be like uh, the direction or the directions that it faces, uh, and by Default. You know, actually, hold on. These these directions I thought had information on. Direction goes to each other. I thought they had information on what their direction was, but I, I guess it's not. All references. Oh, it's because it's supported by move, I think. So if we go to verbs, move. Do I have any of this? Text. No, it's not. Let's see. 
clockwise. Let's find all the places here. Uh, switch move. Direction is right clockwise. All right. Um, so I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make this. Make some case. Dot down. In case. It's a little awkward, but I've had more than a few people try to pull these level or, or ah, pull these levers, um, which makes sense because they just came from a puzzle where you pull the lever, um, and it says you know you can't pull it, and people tend to interpret that as well. It, it depends. Uh, some people interpret that as, oh, I just can't do anything with this, and other people interpret it as, oh, I need to try something more specific. Um, but there's no real reason why pulling shouldn't work and why pushing shouldn't work. So uh, I'm just going to make those rotate right and left, respectively. Um, let's see. Super door interaction. Uh, longest word typed. Most used word. Most some analytic stuff in there. Oh man, you know what? It would actually be very interesting to uh, see what the analytics are on these on these builds, because um, that stuff should get queued and pushed over to my Unity cloud services, so I could probably actually look at the analytics that I have in there now. Um, ooh, I might do that after the stream today. Actually, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, tip, tip over, pinch. Right, open and push two objects, loading the location text. Uh, I'm kind of going through my notes real quick and looking for anything particularly egregious. Um, yep, friends, title screen. I'm not quite into the title screen task now. Of if it does or not. Um, <clears throat> so nap is a new word that needs to be in there. Oh yes, and the king avatar. That's a that's a big one that I didn't fix. Um, so we're gonna go real quick to our dictionary. Uh, da -da -da -da. We're gonna go down to n. Right, is that the correct one? Yes. False. I suppose uh, as a nah. no. Nah. Uh. Let's see. Uh, there's. I was debating there that all that grunting and groaning was me debating if I should add. A compound word, take nap, um, as meaning to nap. That's probably fine. <laughs> yeah, that's probably fine. All right, uh, so let's go to nap. Uh, joint word type is, has pair. And take. Um. No. Well. Mm, no. Actually, this should be somewhere the word take. Take, 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 which is actually key there after I stop using. Take off, slow, take nap, verb, rest. We can say off, out, nap. There we go. Um, 
items. That's pretty nice. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I fixed an issue with floating location text. Uh, so you should respond to lever, which they will do now. Interaction shift no description. Uh, type your own company. Let's test that real quick. Let's run through that real quick, which is convenient because it will let me test out these outputs. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create that. Oh, and you know what? Actually, um, I'm going to also come all the way up to here and do this because I'm going to have... Oh, I don't. Ah, how about... I'm um, going to go back to here real quick. I'm just going to grab this and copy it. Just in case, that way it doesn't... Uh, unexpected uh, if I ever have to redo those. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. So we're going to do a couple of things here. One, we're going to rotate our uh, valves, make sure that everything looks nice. And two, we are going to try to pause and then resume by typing R. Because it seems like that also pulls up the input menu. Which I believe happens because menu sorting is really annoying sometimes. I'm just going to say rotate, say pull, uh, wait, what did I have it go to? I told it to support down. Why does it not do that then? That's curious. Hmm. Okay, and if we say push. Interesting. Um. Huh. Uh, let's go ahead and try this. Okay, um, so that's an implied problem, which I guess makes sense. Uh, it's about 90 degrees clockwise. I like that. I like the 90 degrees. It does it does help um, clarify that you're rotating in 90 degree chunks. Uh, I've had people in the past try to rotate, like they'll say rotate right, and they assume that that means it's going to rotate the valve all the way around until it gets to the right, uh, and that is not the case. So uh, I actually had someone um, this past weekend, and they're not the first person to do, to do this. I've had this happen a handful of times, um, where, the, where they will like start rotating. They'll like say rotate, rotate left, rotate right, rotate left, rotate right, and they'll just keep going back and forth um, because they they don't quite see that it's rotating in, in ninety degree increments. So they're basically um, so this this should help clarify that. Um, okay, so um, we do need. Well, so uh, with the whole pull and push thing not working. I think what's happening there is that my sentence, um, it should be using the direction, the implied direction of the verbs, or of any word, if one exists, um, and pull has an implied direction of down, push has an implied direction of up, um, as well as forward, I believe, and pull has an implied direction of, of backwards, um, but it must not be doing, or parsing that correctly, I suppose, uh, which is a bit of a shame. I believe that's what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and say pause here. Zoom. Okay, so you're working here, but maybe you do not like that build. I'm going to try going back upstairs, actually, real quick. Come back down. Mm -hmm. 
excuse me. All right. Yeah, the auto move is pretty funny. Um, okay, so let's try this again. Okay, well, maybe it was... We have to quit. Okay, so we're going to quit, and then we're going to just continue. There we go. I hate it when it does that. Okay. So, I wish I knew why it... Whatever. Um, so... For some reason, whenever, after you've gone through the first session, um, the UI will behave correctly if you if it's the first session. And then on second subsequent playthroughs, uh, while the, on the same session, um, this will happen, where menus will kind of jostle uh, a bit when one closes, another will immediately open up. I have zero idea why this is the case. I do not understand why it only happens after the player character has been destroyed once. Um, I would assume it was some sort of event listener thing, but that doesn't really make sense. Um, so, cool. Uh, we need to not have you be open, I guess. Jeez. What are, what are we going to do with this? Um, let's go... Close this. And we need to go to... Controls, I think is what it's called. Yeah, that's menu controls. Um, all right, so if we hit the enter key, which is our open interaction, I believe. Yes. view is not listening for submit. Ugh, excuse me. Uh, let's see here. Can, can control current view. Straight view is fading. Um, pause. So I suppose what we want to do here is say, hmm, that's interesting. So the enter keys being necessary are actually non-rebindable now that I think about it. Um, I, maybe I should expose those. Um, essentially, you can't rebind, enter, and return. Uh, to anything else. I mean, you could. It would probably break things horribly. Uh, but you can't... Rebinding will not change how input uh, fields work, which all expect pressing enter. Um, so, I th think it would be fine for me to say and not UI dot get pause view dot is open. I'm a little concerned that that won't actually do anything. Um, just because of how oh no yeah okay no dang it I knew I forgot it. This, we'll go ahead and uh, quit and then continue, and then it should be in the same spot. We should be able to test if that works. Um. <laughs> okay. Let's see, were there any other bugs while well, that's compiling? Um, Tile screen stuff, which I have in there. Uh, Oh, right, the king. 
my teeth, and it's snapping too. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of go up here. We're gonna hit play. We're gonna quit. We're gonna continue, uh, and then we should be back where we were. And hopefully, it will not open up the input menu. Start. You should not be doing that. So that's not so great. Oh my goodness, that's a bit much. Okay. Um, okay. So that's still going, uh, which makes sense because it's probably checking after the thing is already closed, which sucks. Um, Frack. Um, hmm. Well, there's an idea. So let's close that. I'm going to, just out of curiosity, go out to here. Let's go to here. Go to motion. Let's go to here. The way that this works um, <clears throat> is when you submit text, it basically I'm, I'm basically manually waiting for uh, you to press these keys and I actually kind of want that to happen one frame later that would be nice that would solve a lot of my issues actually But not really. Crap. Um, boo. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. How do I want to handle this? Um, <laughs> let's submit. That's just not going to work, is it? <laughs> boo. Um. really don't want to do that oh actually I definitely don't want to do that because if I wait one frame then all of my input field stuff will, like there will be a bunch of input field shenanigans so that's not great um, harumph 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 all right uh, I'm gonna put a debug in here make sure that this is the one that's happening I'm reasonably sure that that is, but I want to be absolutely sure that it is. Um, and in that case, what are my approaches going to be? Um, there are not a lot of great options, admittedly. Um, Um, I need it to wait one frame. It has to wait one frame. If it doesn't, it won't work. Um, okay. I bet this could probably be solved by script execution order changes, actually, which I will probably try. Um, I just want to... So we've already gotten test to happen there. Um, yes. Okay. So I am going to. Oh, that's fun. Uh, and by fun, I mean not fun. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and stop playing. So we know that that's happening. Um, and I am going to, real quick, we're going to go to File, or actually, Project Settings, and then Script Execution Order. I am going to force input menu to happen first. Oh dear. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so menu controls. Um, let's go for menu control. Okay. Things, isn't it? Uh, I'm sorry. All the scripts executed at the default time in the order they are loading. Change the script and modify the method for more complex scripts. It's all fine. Scripts and custom. Does this require update or, well, start or update? Because it should have update, right? Like menu controls are totally, they totally have an update. Um, well, let's find out. Uh, let's try to find a script that I wrote. Cloud Drift. Cloud Drift is a script that I wrote. At least I believe it is. Cloud Drift. This is definitely, oh my goodness. That's how old it is. Oh my goodness. That's almost, that's embarrassing. So, you should have a cloud script, or cloud drift on there. Yup. It's not namespaced! Oh, oh, man. Woof. Woof. Please tell me it's also not using... Don't, don't do it. It is! Oh, so painful. Okay. We're going to properly namespace this. Namespace. Uh, CPL. Not text quest. And then we're going to have... Um, but why was it selectable? It does have an awake. Okay. So script execution orders must only happen for awake and I'm assuming start, uh, but not update, which is unfortunate. I thought I was going to be able to enforce execution order there, which sucks. Um, but at the very least, you know, hey, I managed to get some, some coding standards into these scripts. Oof. Oof. Oof, what even is this? Why would I do this? Oh my goodness. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why? Why do I have this uh, time to delta times equal to speed t plus equals? Oh my god. Oh! Oh, I want to beat past Chris with the stupid stick. Well, that'd be redundant. Clearly, he was already beat pretty hard with it. Um. Wow. Really, though. Oh, boy. Speed does not even... Wow. Really? Okay. Yeah, let's... Um... Oh, my goodness. This is just embarrassing. Um... Field Dualtech. Script. Uh, start. Cloud. Switch. Cloud. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... God, I almost feel like I didn't even write this script. Like, I just got it off the internet and I feel like that's what I did, because why would I have a timer counting down when I have an update loop? 
Oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Um, anyway, so we need to say you've seen sleepyowl dot common and make this an SOS mono behavior so that all those transforms uh, references are not constantly being evaluated, which is terrible. My goodness, what an embarrassment that was. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and change this to private void start. Uh, we're gonna do something there. Uh, we're gonna say serialize field tool tip, and then we're gonna go ahead and say I believe it is range vector range. No, it's been max range. Between, from the looks of it, 0 0.001, or sorry, 001F, and 0.002F, at least that's what it currently is set to, um, probably it's going to end up being private. Vector 2, speed range is equal to new vector 2 dot, and it's going to be this. Let's go ahead and set this between, I don't know, 0F and I really don't know, um, 10F. I have no idea why it's like that. Um, so on start, we're going to say SPD is equal to random.range. No range from speed range. Speed Range dot x to speed range dot y. Um, vector k dot this and I could probably pull that off pretty easily. So we're just grabbing our distance from the start post to the end post and dividing that. We're basically doing the inverse lift there, aren't we? Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to get rid of like all. And, oh my god, this is just embarrassing. Um, that. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and do all this fun stuff. Why this is so redundant. Um, otherwise, we're just going to say t plus equals time dot delta time divided by SPD, which I will rename speed. Oof, this is painful. I'm going to rename T as delta, too. OK, um, that should pretty much do the exact same thing, except now we don't have a coroutine that's running every frame. Or, well, not every frame, but just running arbitrarily on these clouds. Um, so that's fun. This is also pointless um, because we're essentially going to say if it's greater than one, it's going to snap back to zero, which makes sense um, because we should loop back to that. So this is actually redundant because that'll loop back to it anyway. Cool, so that streamlined that code a bunch. Uh, get rid of you. And cool. Uh, range, sorry, speed, the cloud is. Why would it be so freaking hot, like small here for our speed range? Seems very odd. Uh, we were doing delta time there, so it's not like this was an early hack where I didn't know how to use delta time. Uh, it's just that that speed seems so slow. That's one thousand. That's that's a millimeter per second, which is very slow, all the way up to. Centimeter per second. Uh, actually, no. This is a millimeter. That's a freaking uh, what? Yak? No, that's not a yak meter. Um, that's the 
opposite direction. Uh, why can't I think of what's bad? Whatever, anyway. Um, so that's really not great. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let that compile real quick. I'm going to try really hard not to have that aneurysm happen. Um, and while we're doing that, actually, I'm going to fix something in King Dialog. Avatar, that's what it is. Um, I realized that when I uh, coded this um, this uh, vowel recognition, I didn't actually bother to do capitalization. So I'm going to add that to it. That should fix that issue. I had a couple of players. Um, I didn't do numbers before either. I had a couple of players, and uh, I had one person use all numbers for their names, um, which is fine. Like, save files are fine with that, but uh, it meant that when the king was fading in and kind of like saying part of your name, you just said all of your name. Uh, same thing happened if people happened to have caps lock on when they entered their name. They just, the king said all of their name instead of fading into it. Um, okay. So I am going to. Uh, just check the speed range value, and I probably am going to hate myself for making it so low. I just want to see what these clouds look like. Um, I'm also curious to know if I have... Huh. I don't know what that is. Um, cool, we didn't actually have any inconsistent line enemies. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off Maximize on Play so that we can kind of see all these clouds. And then uh, I want to see how fast they're moving. So those were the original values, um, 0 0.0001 and 0 0.002 for our speed range, which seems very slow. Let's see how fast or slow they move. Because if they seem to be going all right, then, pff, hey, what do I know? They are. Which actually does kind of make sense. Because they are moving at, on a normalized value. So that's actually not too bad. All right. Um, Yeah. Let's see if we can click on all of these. Um, let's see, cloud. Yeah, all right. I just wish I had made those numbers a little bit more sensible. That would have been better. Um, but that is the problem, I guess, there. It says it's a lerp operation instead of a movement-based operation, but that makes sense. Um, yeah, all right, whatever, that works. Um, so let's go ahead and stop playing. Oh, and that yeah, should be fine. Okay, um, let's see, are there any other notes? We might go ahead and end it there, um, just because some of the other notes that I have regard Sierra mode, and I obviously can't do that on the air. Um, I did have quite a few people try to beat Sierra mode, and no one managed to do it, though. Uh, some people, I don't think anyone got past that first puzzle, uh, which is good for me. Although, admittedly, I'm sad, because I really, really wanted to see what people thought of the new visual thing that I added to help... Uh, with to help give a hint for what the solution would be. It is very hard to see, I will admit that. Um, but I did add a visual cue to it. 
to Sierra mode to help guide people through that uh, through that initial puzzle, but uh, not a lot of people noticed it. Actually, no one noticed it. Um, otherwise, they would have probably figured it out. Um, so it is what it is. Um, all right, so we're probably gonna go ahead and end it there. Uh, announcements. I should be back for this entire week streaming, finally. Um, next week, I should be good to stream on Tuesday. However, because of a schedule miscommunication, uh, a independent game developer, like a uh, an event for the local game devs that was originally going to be scheduled for next month has been bumped up to next week. Uh, so I will be going to an event next Thursday evening. Um, so I will not be able to do my dev stream next Thursday. Um, I'll be tweeting about the event, though, so. Uh, that is pretty much the only thing that I have off the top of my head. Uh, so, yeah. Um, that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. Uh, and, yeah, no more announcements. So, <clears throat> I never know how to end these things. It's always super awkward. Also, I'm still tired, so I very much apologize. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think that's a good place to stop for the night. So, as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.